and you discover that to really understand reality, you need to look at it from every possible angle, every possible perspective. Sort of like if we had an elephant standing here and we wanted to understand this elephant, what most people do is they just take one snapshot of the elephant from one particular angle relative to where they're standing. So one person will take the snapshot from the front, one from the back, one from the side, one from underneath, from one from up top, one from two feet away, one from a hundred feet away, one from a mile away, and they all get different views of the elephant. But if you're the type of person who wants to understand what an elephant really is, can you ever be satisfied with a single angle? No. You need to see every possible angle. Now you might wonder, but, but, but what is the elephant really? This is sort of the question that philosophers ask. There's our perception of the elephant. Okay, we've got that. It's got colors and this and that. But, but Leo, different people see the elephant in different ways. You know, maybe a colorblind person looks at the elephant one way. Or like if we're using different cameras, you know, every camera is going to capture that elephant differently. So it's not just a matter of angle. It's also a matter of what camera you use, what lens you use, what settings in the camera you use. So you see, we start to get a multiplication of possibilities here. So it's not even just as simple as every possible angle. And notice, to get this elephant just even using a single camera, a single lens, all the exact same settings, and even using a single distance from the elephant, can you see that there's an infinite number of angles to an elephant? Infinite angles. But now, it gets more complex. The infinity increases, because it's not just different angles, it's different distances from the elephant. It's different cameras, different lenses, different settings. We can look at the elephant in different uh, electromagnetic spectrum. We can see what the elephant looks like to the human eyes or to a camera designed for human eyes, or we can look at it through night vision or through x-ray or through infrared or through ultraviolet uh, and whatever else there exists. We can look at it even through sonar. We can use a sonar to hit that elephant, you know, ping the elephant like a submarine sort of thing with a radar uh, and get some sort of signature back. And that will be one aspect of the elephant. You see, so what's happening is that we're pinging this elephant using different settings, so to speak. We're going to just say settings includes all the possible variations, cameras, angles, whatever. Um, and, and we're getting some data back in a certain sense from that elephant. Um, we can even ask like artists. You know, that would be an interesting example. Take an, uh, take an elephant take a hundred different artists, put them at a hundred different angles and have them draw that elephant. And you're going to get like very, very different depictions. You know, some of the art will be very realistic. Some of the art will be very impressionistic, like that sort of Monet fuzzy painting. Some will be very abstract or, um, you know, maybe some artists will just draw a square, like a blue square on a, on a white background. That will be his, his notion of, you know, that's the essence, the spirit of the elephant is that, that blue square. Somebody else will, will do like a Picasso sort of fragmented cubist, uh, you know, painting of the elephant. Uh, so people will exaggerate and distort in all different ways. And you might say, well, which one is true? Well, it's the one that's most realistic, right? It's the one that actually looks closest to an elephant. No, it's completely relative. All of the perspectives are valid given that you understand where the perspective is coming from, you see. So in a certain sense, that highly abstract painting of an elephant that just captures its pure essence, like a, a square painted blue or a square painted gray, you might say, well, but this, this is a child could draw that. That's not real art. It doesn't really capture the elephant, but it could capture the essence of an elephant better than a realistic depiction of the elephant. But in order to appreciate that, you have to really fully go into the mind of the person who drew that thing. 
You see, it's very easy to just dismiss it and say, well, that that's not really an elephant. That's some bullshit. It has nothing to do with an elephant. So you got you to think beyond that. This is where it really helps to be able to step outside your perspective. Because if your whole perspective of art is that it has to be as real as possible, that you have to recognize that that's one perspective of art. It doesn't have to be that way. Nowhere in the universe does, does God say that elephants must be depicted as they are in the most photorealistic way. In a certain sense, there's, there's more artistry and there's something more interesting and more profound and deep when you capture an elephant in an abstract way. If you can actually capture it that way, it's not easy. It's not just as simple as drawing a square and painting a certain color. Um, to really capture its essence, you'd have to go beyond that. You'd have to, you'd have to kind of like see into its soul or see into its essence, into its spirit. Whatever that means. So, so you might wonder if we accumulate all of this, all of these different perspectives, you know, we have photorealistic ones, we have x-rays, we have microwave pictures, we have sonars and radars, and we have different painters painting the elephant in different ways. How is the elephant really? Well, of course, the elephant is infinity. The elephant is nothing. The elephant is everything. The elephant is the infinity of infinity of ways in which it can be seen, understood, and depicted. So normally we think of an elephant as like, this creature with big ears and tusks and it's gray colored and it's got a tail and it's it's big and it's got feet and this is how we normally think of an elephant. Uh, no, that's an elephant relative to your bios, to your human nervous system, to your eyes, ears, all of that. So if we... See, you actually believe that's how an elephant, that's like what an elephant is. You believe that's what an elephant is is the way that you see it. And I mean, it is that. That's a valid way to see an elephant. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you really want to understand what an elephant is, you're going to have to explore every possible perspective of that elephant. And then when you unify them all together, then you understand what an elephant really is. And it's infinity. It's just infinity, as is every other object, as is the entire universe, as are you. See, even just to see that elephant to begin with, what you had to do is you had to separate yourself from the elephant such that there's an elephant here, there's you as a human over here, using your nervous system to look at this elephant over here, and then, you know, light is bouncing forth and all this sort of stuff. You had to sort of, you had to create all of these dualities, all these distinctions. You had to separate yourself from the elephant so you could look at the elephant in that particular way that you're looking at it from and see it from that limited perspective. And then you get a material elephant. Because if you didn't do that, there wouldn't be any material elephant there to begin with. There wouldn't even be a you to begin with. So see, if you want the full richness of reality, it's imperative that you start to appreciate all the different perspectives that can be taken on every object and every subject and to be neutral about it so that you don't get biased or locked into any one favorite one. Because you see, if you say that, well, the best depiction of an elephant is a photorealistic one, or the most truest version of an elephant is the one taken with this Nikon camera with this particular lens and this particular distance at this particular angle. If you get if you get stuck on that, then see you're you're, you're look at how much of a reality you're missing out on. You're missing out on the the true beauty and awesomeness of what reality is, which which is its diversity of of perspectiveness.
you're literally missing out on infinity by choosing to look at reality from one particular partial angle.